Welcome back to the Nutri Medical Report. Probably one of the most important hours of the week is the preparedness, civil defense, bank holidays, martial law, earth changes, and space weather hour with our panel. John Moore, uh, amazing uh, background. John, of course, being Special Forces. He's currently a forensic investigator for criminal cases. He's a prepper consultant. Basically, if you've got millions of dollars or if you just are a regular person and want to consult, he's the guy if you want to uh, stack a container and send it off to the Cook Islands. Uh, if you want to uh, do that or if you want to set up a community, he's the expert. Uh, he has his own radio show from ni- uh, 7 to 9 Central Standard Time, Monday to Friday. Uh, and... Uh, uh, I won't make any further announcements on that because I know there's some special news coming. Uh, Ann Morrison is our scientist. Uh, his site, by the way, is thelibertyman.com. Ann Morrison, our scientist, expert on earth changes, UV light, uh, space weather, volcanism, earthquakes, and much more. Uh, Ann is a great researcher, and she is at homeland security uh, for you.com. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, homeland defense for you.com. Homeland have a defense for you. I don't know why I'm thinking security. <laughs> and of course, we'll be picking up Alexander Bachman later on in the hour. Um, John, what's the latest stories that you're tracking? Well, uh, Dr. Bill, thank you for having me. Uh, it appears that uh, those of us who live between the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachians are getting smacked by uh, weather manipulation, man made weather manipulation. Uh, unprecedented uh, things going on with the weather in terms of cold. Uh, amounts of precipitation, both rain and snow. Keeping in mind, uh, the first day of summer is only about six and a half weeks away, and we're having snow. Uh, this is pretty strange, to say the least. Uh, yeah. One of my listeners sent me a link, and I forwarded it to you and Ann and Alexander uh, earlier today, uh, showing the effects of HARP. And, and you and I talked privately, Dr. Bill, about uh, how there's other imaging uh, modalities they show what that looks like from looking from the top down. Uh, yeah, if you look at the top down, it looks like a children's uh, pinwheel. Uh, and what they do is they create what's called a toroidal pinwheel effect. And what it does is pull storm cells in toward the center, just like a little pinwheel where the wind catches and it spins around. That works as a heat, it's, they superheat the ionosphere, and what it does is act like rails to pull the storm cells in toward the center of that uh, system. So when they're doing that, they're basically saying, we want weather here. Right. So they know the storm cells are going to gather. There's warm and hot air masses near it, and it starts to pull them together so it can create literally weather-like snow. Uh, they can you know there's an intersecting cold air mass with a warm air mass, and boom, you got snow. Uh, right. Why are they doing this? Because they want famine. And, you know, I talked to the top experts on weather. I took care of pilots flying out of Buckley and Peterson, putting up the nanoparticles in the upper atmosphere. I spent an entire evening and got the documents on geoengineering the climate in 1997 from Dr. Isley 16 years ago. So I can tell you I'm a world-class expert on this, and I can tell you I know the quantum uh, transform physics in terms of higher atmospheric changes. And there's one thing that this is all based on, famine. They right, are modifying the weather to create uh, drought and disruption and famine, period. The, the, uh, your engineer pushed the button. I can barely hear you. But uh, the, 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 fall, the outcome from this is going to be very, very damaging to agriculture, farmers involved in growing grains, uh, cattle business, and so forth. Another t- week or two of this, and it will be a disastrous harvest for the grain belt, which is between the Appalachian Mountains and the, and the Rocky Mountains, uh, and most of it, of course, west of Mississippi, uh, it will be absolutely devastating for all grain crops, corn, wheat, soybeans, even rice. Uh, the far right. South. And, and that's right. what we're and, looking uh, at. Uh, yeah, and this is what we talked about before about with Robert Felix, who he was on last year, before he took a little retirement from being on the show regularly. We hope to get him back on. <clears throat> is that the first signs that you're in an ice age, which we are heading into, is that you'll have uh, the season so late that normal crops can't go in, so your crops you expect that are grain crops for your animals, uh, your primary crops that are used for many different foodstuff preparation, basically just aren't there because this, the growing season starts too late. Interesting. So, um, any other major stories? I, the ones that I'm tracking are <laughs> there's so many stories. I just I, it gets so overwhelming when you look at all the stories out there. Any other major stories you're tracking, John? I, I think that maybe I'm back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're back, John. John, <laughs> any other major stories you're tracking? Well, we continue to look at what's going on with the euro and and. Uh, what, and these countries, 
stocked gold and it was in entrusted it to the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States, and apparently it's not there. Uh, this is going to be real serious real quick. Wars get started with things like this, Dr. Bill. Yeah. Uh, you know how, where did that go when that gold disappeared from Fort Knox? It was 1933 when America technically went into bankruptcy. And the most of that gold was shipped over under an arrangement where they tried to uh, abscond with people's gold, and they sent it over to Europe. So all that gold basically went to Europe now. Not that they couldn't replenish it. If it's not at Fort Knox, you know that the largest gold mine in the world is in Alaska. The second largest is in British Columbia, north of Williams Lake. Not in South Africa, in Canada. The largest one in the world, potential gold reserve mine, is in Alaska. So we have the potential also at $254 to $280 per ounce, you can extract gold from the ocean. I talked to an engineer four and a half years ago from Huntington Beach, California, and he has the patents and technology on doing that. So when people say that the gold used to be a certain price, Physical gold is still selling like crazy with premiums 30 to 50 percent over spot price. Paper gold is gone. Anybody who's an idiot to buy paper gold is out of their mind. They don't extract the gold from the ocean, they extract it from sea salt, which is concentrated yeah. seawater. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I got some, a few stories I'll throw out here. 29 percent of registered voters believe armed revolt may be necessary in the next few years. That kind of makes sense. Uh, we have a. By the way, we have a, this guy um, uh, that is the uncle of the Summer of Boys. Apparently, he married the daughter of Mr. Fuller, who is a senior CIA agent, and did lots of things. If you actually look at his uh, CV, and I talked to Joel Skousen earlier today about that. It's mind-boggling. This guy is a major CIA asset uh, at the highest level. He's involved with major court operations and trading billions of dollars uh, directly. Uh, he's an asset. This is the uncle of these kids. So these kids were connected to one of the guys who, for convenience to get American citizenship, he married the daughter of this major CIA operative. What do you think of that? Well, uh <laughs> that, that kind of stretches credibility to the breaking point about this whole thing, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, 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 and then then we got Obama and his Yahoo is trying to see if they can persecute Christians for ch sharing their gospel and their faith uh, in the uh, military, especially when you're dealing with life and death. It is amazing. It is amazing that the that the Pentagon, in the midst of this disaster, uh, is, is trying to do this. It's very, very amazing, isn't it? Well, in in the, in the meantime, uh, the Muslims and the Sikhs and other uh, uh, people like that uh, seem to have no problem practicing their faith in the military, do they? No, no, not at all. In fact, uh, yeah, you can be certain that if this uh, uh, kid, uh, Sunarev, gets a, a full, full court press, uh, he'll be able to pray five times a day and they'll make sure that they are able to make sure he has all of his garb, etc., and be able to wear a beard even if it uh, covers up his face, which is against prison rules. So, Absolutely. Well, we have men yeah. wearing beards in, in the U.S. military for religion. The Sikhs, for example, you can't seal a gas mask on your face if you're wearing a beard. Yeah, I know. I used to respiratory fit, and you know, if you're in a military situation where you have to wear a gas mask, you're dead. Exactly. You're not just having a bad day. You're dead. Okay, so uh, this is what I call military, disrupting military preparedness, just like putting women in combat is another stupid thing that's just crazy. I don't care how strong they are and how smart they are. Putting women in combat with men is deadly. Well, people it start making, uh, it's been making mad decisions of who are they going to save who got their right leg blown off the... You know, this asset or that asset. So when you do that, it's another deadly, stupid move on the part of the government. Just like, uh, you know, everything that Obama touches, he has the anti Midas touch. He turns Absolutely. Crap. Well, everything he touches is the anti American touch. Yeah. And by the way, Obama blames the U.S. for gun violence in Mexico. He actually stated that in a speech in Mexico City with this new president that Obama blamed U.S. Blamed US for the gun violence in Mexico. What do you think of that? Well, and here I he is, the that, author with, with Eric true. Holder of the Fast and Furious, and he has the damn nerve to do this. Just for making that statement, he should be cooling his ass in prison. Just that alone. Who the hell does he think he is? Well, Dr. Bill, I'm going to turn it over to you and Anna. I'm going to jump out of here. Yeah, yeah. major story is coming. Thanks a lot, John. We will be back in a moment with Ann Morrison and an update with Alexander Bachman. Um, do listen to uh, John's radio show over at, you can check it at thelibertyman.com. We'll be back in just a moment with Ann Morrison. <laughs> Welcome 
welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we have an update from Ann Morrison on a number of things. Ann, uh, give us uh, your report on science, space weather, whatever is important that's happening now. Well, okay. Uh, we want to be sure to look at the uh, comet, and the, uh, the comet is called Lemon, and you can see it now in the northern hemisphere, but you're probably going to need binoculars. And on, uh, at this time, it's very low in the eastern sky during the morning twilight. Yeah. And, and by the end of the month, it'll be high during the morning twilight. So uh, it's going to be low until the middle of May, and then it'll be high and, uh, higher than that. And that's really the only comment that we have to worry about right now. Uh, the other ones either require telescopes or, or uh, well, you just can't see them. And... Um, Let's see, we have a meteor shower coming up, and that's going to be, mm, that's going to be May 4th and 5th, and today is the 3rd, so that will be Saturday and Sunday, and it's the Eta Aquanids, Aqua, <laughs> Aqua, Aquarids, and uh, probably uh, in the northern hemisphere, we can probably see 30 meteors per hour. And the wow. interesting thing, of course, is that we've been, the meteors have been turning into meteorites. So we definitely want to get out there and look. Now, those of us in the Midwest are not going to be able to see anything because we're under this cloud that uh, John was talking about and that you were talking about that may have uh, implications from HARP. But in any case, where you can see it, I suggest that you get out there and watch for fireballs because more and more meteors seem to be hitting the Earth. Um, it peaks this year on the night of May 4th and the morning of May 5th, and uh, it, we do have a second quarter moon, so you won't have a dark, a dark, uh, dark canvas to look at. And uh, that's about it as far as meteors and comets go. Now, we do have at least three bio-warfare things to talk about. Um, there seems to be evidence of person-to-person -person transmission within a family of yeah. the novel coronavirus infections in, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. in England. Yeah, that's and in England, and uh, there's also a hotspot in Germany, too. That's, that's significant, isn't it? That's By the way, the... significant, yeah. yeah. Um, what they're doing. We're having similar problems, by the way, with the numbers in, in China of the H7 and 9, that the numbers are thousands, not hundreds, and that person to person transmission is a fact. In fact, I listened to, uh, to the Rents Network, to uh, Dr. Nyman. I've also been doing my other research on checking multiple articles. This uh, virus is, is recombining eight times faster than any other known virus, flu virus, and it's uh, after the May 1st uh, travel in China. It's only a matter of weeks to a month, I think, before we're going to see a major outbreak here in America. So I expect in May or June we're going to see an outbreak of H7 and 9 here. Yeah, well, this you know this is uh, like SARS, except that SARS was very transmissible and it killed very fast. The incubation period was very short, and so they could yeah. they could tell. I mean, if they gathered the people, or um, if they quarantined the people who were around the the patient who had been around the patient and watched them for ten days, they could tell who was infected and who wasn't. Right. And uh, so it was very easy to stamp out. Well, I won't say it was easy. We lost a lot of medical personnel during that stamping out, but they were able to keep it out of the United States, and it was Canada that did the stamping out. But this one, this one, the transmission method is uh, less known. It's not as fast, and the incubation period is unknown. Now, they're still using 10 days. They're still saying that if you end up in the hospital, that you probably were exposed 10 days before, but they don't know. And the other thing that they don't know is because a lot of these people that don't are co-infected with something else, in other words, and they have something else gets treated because they recognize that, and they don't recognize the kidney failure and the um, and the pneumonia from this coronavirus. So they're they're trying to tell the doctors, hey, consider coronavirus, this novel coronavirus, if a patient comes in, and uh, you know you you might want to uh, think about doing that. Now, because the incubation period is so long. Um, they, in this one case, they had to quarantine 103 people 
Now, that included his family members, the people that were on the plane, and usually what they do is they take the row in front and the row beside, I mean behind, and the people in the row that are beside the patient, and they uh, quarantine them and check them for um, for disease. Then the, the medical personnel who were not protected, uh, before it was before it was uh, identified, and uh, so they do a virus screen, and they know that it's a uh, it's an H H one N one, and oh, I'm sorry, this patient came in with H one N one, but on seven days later, a week later, they they finally determined that the, he also had the novel coronavirus. Right. Yeah, so that's the problem, is that they aren't treating them, and all those people that are around that person and treating him for the H1N1 then have to be quarantined. Yeah. So, um, so wow. if you know anybody who has been to the Middle East, be very aware. Yeah, exactly. That, uh, I, I would say this is one that I'm going to repeat this prediction. Not a prophecy, but a prediction. We're going to see a bond market blow at the same time an avian pandemic arrives. We're also seeing the transfer of heavy equipment and, and advanced strike weapons for long-distance warfare to Israel. So it means there's an imminent attack on uh, Iran. We see America announcing they're going to give weapons to the Al Nusra Al Qaeda and other uh, NATO-backed uh, terrorists that are trying to do regime change. And the Russians are moving heavy equipment into Syria. Uh, this is going to blow up really soon. I think that by next month, we're going to be into an expanding war in Syria, and they, they want to take Syria down first before they do a first strike on Iran. If they do this, the Strait of Hormuz will close. And that's the first thing I was told in 1988, which is 25 years ago, in the very first event of the time of Soros, of the end of the age before the peace treaty signed. That Strait of Hormuz, if that closes, God help us, because the world economy will crash, one third of the oil that comes through the, that straight, the area there, one third of the oil in the world that is transported every day comes through the Strait of Hormuz. So if that happens, the world economy is going to crash and go code blue. Total cardiac arrest. Uh, so, Alexander, you have a lot of stories to update. I mean, you gave a good long list today. You've been doing your homework all hours of the day and night. Tell us what's up. Well, basically, Obama came in uh, to Mexico, just uh, did basically... Uh, uh, pit stop, you know, and uh, was treated as uh, a phenomenon in Mexico as he rode his beast machine inside Mexican city streets. Even the protesters st st stood aside uh, on the side of the most important uh, road uh, or boulevard in Mexico City where all kings and queens uh, dance and parade down the streets since uh, 200 years back. Well, Barack Hussein Obama was treated just like a king. He was taken to the Palacio Nacional in the downtown old part of Mexico City, which is the National Palace, which is never open generally for anybody. But he, since he's a king, uh, you know, Amenhotep has to re be received as an Egyptian pharaoh. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm just going to give the headlines of some of the topics you sent over to talk about today, uh, Alexander. Solar flares, uh, increase in radiation from uh, Fukushima Daiichi in Japan. Mexico suffering from forest fires. Of course, they're always happening here in California, M Michelle announced in the first hour. Mexico suffering from drought, affecting at least 10 states. UV index reaches 14 in Mexico City. Obama in Mexico parades in the beat of his beast, which is their, his kind of bulletproof you know, machine of death. Uh, praises for the pro New World Order reverbs. And of course, he also made the comment that the violence in Mexico is caused by U.S. guns. Uh, and said, no, for a nuclear plant, basically, if it's not shut down, if they try to restart the plant, there's one of the workers came out from San Onofre, uh, which has said if it's restarted, it will go critical. We'll have a, a China syndrome or meltdown and a complete rupture of the containment. We'll have a matter of massive radiation release that will affect me and 4.5 million uh, Americans directly uh, downwind or upwind of the reactor. So uh, if they try to start it, I'm going to sue them. There will be lots of other people suing them. We'll actually bar or parade right down around the reactor. They're not going to damn well set that reactor back on again. Yeah, this thing called Amaya is going to be a hot one because uh, we just had a 5.7 solar flare detected uh, on Sunspot 1719 near the northeastern limb at 1732 Universal uh, 
uh, time. And universal time, well, minus 8 for Pacific Standard Time we're talking about this morning. And uh, this thing was a doozy, 5.7 magnitude. Uh, we're talking about a flare that's going to reach by Cinco de Mayo, a strong one. Yeah. Uh, it was on the eastern limb. It's probably not Earth-directed, but anyway. It's an M M5 class flare, which would mean it's near the top of the M class, which is almost bad enough to be an X class flare. That's very significant, too. Um, second time in three days at the same ferrocyte active region was unleashing strong flares. So uh, we're going to see some bad stuff happen. And any comments? You're an expert on space weather. Well, the uh, event lasted from, let's see, it lasted about, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 30 minutes. It lasted about half an hour. So that's a, uh, that's a long time for a flare to be uh, coming off of the sun. Uh, you know, normally um, other events that, that come off the sun are two or three minutes at the most, and most of them are under a minute. So we have a flare. This was an M5.7. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it lasted about half an hour. Wow. And it doesn't say that a CME was ejected with it. Um, there was a flare, and uh, that's about all they say. It came from 1739. Now, 1739 is just rotating around, and so it's not gonna, it should not affect Earth. Well, yeah. I can't wait for a sunspot 1776. They'll call it the Alex Jones solar flare. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's funny. Because yeah. he said the answer to 1984 is 1776. That's one of his favorite sayings. And I love that saying. That's really good. Um, what? Uh, here's the timeline that I see coming this year. Uh, and I just want to throw these events out. I think the first thing is we're seeing them preparing for war in the next 60 days for, with Israel, Syria, and Iran. They're arming the Syrians, which means the war is going to expand. We see the bond market are about to blow up when they try to manipulate gold. They kill paper, gold, and silver. Real gold and silver are not killed at all. Everybody everywhere doesn't believe it. They're not stupid. Uh, I see a famine coming, and that by November, I expect the southern hemisphere to be strobed by ultraviolet light and CME that's caused by this sun grazer. I saw in comments going to cause major super storms on the sun that will go on for probably months, many months, uh, not just one storm. And these will have serious effects on the Earth's uh, satellite systems, ground-based communications, power networks. Works, and I think it'll cause a massive increase in famine because it's going to kill crops in the southern hemisphere with strobing with ultraviolet light, uh, which you know can go on for hours. And all you need is two or three hours of strobing ultraviolet light, and bye-bye crops. Uh, the, as it says in the Bible, all the grassy plants one through the trees died. You know, I see these kind of events coming. You know, now, now that you're talking about it, it, this is important, Ann and Bill. I just came back from Mexico City, right? And uh, as I came back, I mean, I had to grab a, a newspaper out of the hotel. I just went, uh, just one day, I stayed not more than 48 hours in that hellhole. And uh, basically, the moment I landed, I went through this uh, dark, murky soup uh, of uh, uh, thermal inversion. Uh, everything's inverted up there in the sky. All, uh, everything is stagnant over the Mexico City, these cancerous uh, elements over the city, including the ash cloud, the ashes from the Popocatépetl volcano. So imagine the people are living inside this soup. So you land your plane, it all smells like a sewage plant, a massive sewage plant. And uh, I'm there, my skin is cracking open because uh, it reacted, and my eyes are like super dry here. So anyway, I pick up this newspaper and it says that teenagers, there's uh, basically uh, teenagers are, are beginning to show Tremendous signs of uh, skin cancer yep. in Mexico City because of the high UV rates. Right. The UV rates are beyond control. Well, and they had to expand the scale two, uh, two years ago. Before, they only went up to 10, and now I think they go up to 13 or 14. Um, and they just called it 11 plus. But uh, I Mexico think City hit 14, according to Alexander. Uh, Alexander, can you expand on that? Because that's extremely dangerous to go outside. You get pterygian, which is these things that grow across the eye. You no, get you uh, cataracts. The, the, your skin starts burning up in 10 minutes. You feel the fire on your skin. And right now, Mexico is under a huge drought. It's affecting more than 110,000 farmers. We have forest fires all along the Yucatan Peninsula at this moment. Also, we have a huge drought south of Texas, which is massive in nature. People are not getting the water, water they, they sorely uh, need, 
And, you know, uh, when Obama comes and says this statement today before leaving to Costa Rica, well, we're happy that Mexico is coming out of poverty finally. Yeah, after 300 years, Mexico is finally coming out of poverty when it's 110 million inhabitants. Well, 60 million of them are, live in extreme prover, pro, poverty when they hyperinflated the tortilla crisis uh, three years ago. Uh, and Felipe Calderon burnt all the tortilla and the maize deposits that Mexico had in order to create the food crisis. And now the tortilla, which used to cost us like 30 cents a kilo, costs us a dollar fifty a kilo. How are people going to eat now? Uh, Dr. Bill, I'm just looking at the... Um at the Sunwise for uh, Mexico City, mm -hmm. and uh, today the high was 15. Whoa. Uh, tomorrow, the high wow. is, is almost 16. Uh, Sunday, the high will be 15, and then uh, 15 on Monday. I mean, this is, this is unheard of. I mean, you have to say well, when you have a scale to 10, when you have a scale to 10, 15 means if you go inside, you're going to go blind because you're going to damage your retina. You're going to get cataracts. You're going to, and remember now, uh, Sandale mentioned this, there's two new UV lines uh, that are uh, of frequencies that are coming out. A tans you, B burns you, C causes cancer, D frequencies death. They suppress your immune system, they kill you. We are seeing the new bands in the C and D area. And it's not just a shift in the amount of ultraviolet light, it's a shift in the amount that is a toxic or dangerous or deadly ultraviolet light. You know, there's one now, thing I'd like to add, maybe we can discuss it when we get back from the break, the situation with the sun, because uh, NASA used to, well, you know, the sun has specific cycles of 11.1 .1 years of doing its inversion of 180 degrees and... It was not logical. Is NASA coming out saying, no, well, the solar maximum, we're going to extend it to 2013. Oh, and maybe 2015. What is going on, you know? Uh, they don't know what's going on. They I mean, they've only been tracing, on. exactly. tracking this for uh, 150 years. I mean, it's not... Uh, it's not conducing to uh, logic here. Man, and the sun is like uh, uh, an engine. You know how it... Yeah, how it acts and it should act. So we're going into the solar minimum, not maximum, really, going into an ice age. And, you know, the volcanoes and everything expanding. Well, what's, what's affecting the sun so much and our Earth? Well, it's probably that red dwarf that nobody believes in anymore. <laughs> it's actually three things. I'll just go to the astrophysics. First is we're passing through the galactic plane, which takes around 30 years. And that means uh, that every so many million years you pass through the galactic plane. We're doing it now, believe it or not. We're actually, um, as of December, we passed the midpoint. But the danger area occurs after the midpoint. Second reason, <clears throat> we have the Oort cloud pushing in with the, the, you know, planet X, if you want to call it, which is a red dwarf. And we have comets. These comets have action at a distance. That's the third thing that can have plasma effects or gravitonic effects at a distance. And there's electrical alignment with other planets like Saturn and Jupiter that can affect our weather, volcanism, etc. That's how it works. Welcome back and. Um, Alexander, you had a couple other topics you wanted to bring up. And I have tons of news if you want me to throw out a few storylines here. Uh, throw, 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 throw away. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think people should uh, look at is, uh, and I know they use modern terms, they call it uh, you know, remote viewing with uh, Major A. Ed Dames. It's actually, if you look at the Bible, it's called visions. It says, at the time of the end, <clears throat> your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. And the fact is that... Uh, People all over the place are perceiving something there, almost like the animals that know that there's a tsunami coming, so they're going to the top of the coconut tree, running up the side of the mountain, trying to get away. People know something horrifying is coming. Um, there's a number of scenarios. These are birth pangs, and it's not the end. It'll seem like the end because it's so awful, but people are going to say, you know, the death will flee from them, you know, when the sting of death. And that means we're going to see a disruption of the ozone layer to the point where you won't be able to go out during the day because the ozone layer will be so disrupted. I don't think that's going to happen for some years where it gets that bad, but I do think we're going to have CMEs where the Earth will be strobed in. When that happens, by the way, for hours after the CME starts to strike, you won't want to go outside because you will get UV strobing with ultraviolet light. I think also people should realize that when we were very close to 
a world economic collapse because they want to purposely collapse it to get a biometric uh, world money system in. And they delay the implementation of our national ID specifically for that reason. It was down two years. It was supposed to be the May of this year. Some people said to Deagle, you know, I had this a week or so ago. They said, well, you said they were going to have the national ID by now. I said, yeah, they kicked it down the road because they knew that they couldn't get away with it, but when they collapse the economy, they're going to move to a biometric currency, and it will be a reinvented U.S. dollar. That's, believe it or not, the fact. So <clears throat> the uh, 90% of the world currency on the planet is U.S. dollars. Uh, either virtual currency or real. And when I look at things like this immigration bill, they have entire trains. I think they call it the train of death that comes up from Mexico and southern Mexico, Guatemala, Central America. <clears throat> and they literally, they're people, it's a cattle car, and they, live, they literally cling to the roof of the top of it, trying to see if they can get up to Mexico City and then get further north so they can get into uh, America. The, in Texas, they're now arresting 1,000 people a day that are trying to get into America because they think that they're going to get amnesty and get a uh, so they're having a massive flood of people with this immigration bill. Well, and of course, it, they, you know, he wants to legalize, but you know, I have the inside scoop. I I met a person that was directly in contact with the Obama relatives uh, over there in L.A. and they confessed and spilled the beans to this person uh, whom I have right now in, in Mexico. And uh, she she told me uh, everything. She told me that it was all a ruse. In reality, they're not going to legalize anybody. Uh, what they want is people to join the military and use them as cannon fodder, or uh, join uh, well, or have at least college uh, college degree in order to get the paper straightened out. I mean, they're not going to legalize most of the peasants uh, any anytime soon. They're not going to do it anyway. And let me tell you another thing that she told me. They're going to make them believe that they're going to legalize them, but they're going to tell them, you have to go back to Mexico and then re-enter as an American citizen. And that's when they're going to shut down the border and not let anybody in. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they plan to do with 11 million Mexicans. They're going to send them back before they can actually come in? Yeah. That doesn't make sense at all. Well, that's the inside scoop. When it happens, it will happen. Uh, anyway, I'm just saying. Uh, there's a FEMA camp that was found on the Arizona-Mexico border just recently. Uh, look it up on YouTube. It has even guillotines and chopped off heads from, on the Google uh, Google Map service, Google Earth. It's amazing. But there are some very interesting things. Exactly. Now, the, uh, the guillotines, by the way, they're made in China. They're shipped through... A lot of them are shipped through the ports, which are run by Hutchinson Wampo, which is part of the People's Republican Army. The Long Beach, California, uh, I've talked to people who've actually talked to firsthand to people that have been there when the shipping containers came in of guillotines going back over 20 years, 25 years of AK-47s, guillotines, and other military hardware being shipped through for gangs in America. They're being oversought by specific parts of our government to make certain that their gangs are fully up to speed in terms of weapons and tactics. Now, these Chinese guillotines, guess what the marking on them says? They're what? black. They're all black. Right. I think it's carbon steel or whatever it is. It, right. It, it says Allah is great. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm Whoa. not kidding. All right? Well, yeah, the religion of the New World Order is 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 Allah. cover stuff, okay, guys? I mean, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. We, can't even, we can't even talk about these things. But the guillotines are already there. They're, they've been <sighs> testing them underground and also at these uh, locations along the Mexico-U.S. Uh, border. Uh, so this is very interesting. You know, I mean, they're increasing. They're increasing. Right now, the Pentagon can arrest anybody in the service that is preaching Jesus Christ. All right? They can, they can uh, court-martial your butt if you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let, let, let them do it. I think what they should do is they should... Challenge it and see what the population is going to do and what they... And these are laws that need to be challenged immediately. It's almost like um, there's a reason a law that they passed here in California where if you had restraining orders on your previous criminal record, of course, you wouldn't be able to buy a gun anyway because of the database. But they expanded this law now, so even if you had a minor offense. And what they do is they want to make a wide net. They'll take people who are violent criminals from people who are not violent, and they're going to say, no, you can't own a gun, too, because remember, there's always a moving target. They'll take people who are violent criminals who should never get a gun. Uh, people that are truly mentally ill and are on day passes that shouldn't get guns. Um, 
And they throw them all together because they want to expand these laws. Just like Obama passed an executive order to prevent the sale of Glocks to Americans from international manufacturers, they're trying to shut things down because they're ready to do something real bad. When they grab your guns, they're ready to start the killing fields, aren't they? Yes, and they're already doing. They're already starting, uh, you know, initial runs of going into houses and abusing uh, citizens' rights. Uh, I mean, this happens every day in Mexico. I mean, they come into our houses at 3 a.m. Oh, we're sorry, we made a mistake, but we stole all, all your documents. We sto- stole your money. We stole your prized possessions. We scared your children out of bed at gunpoint at 3 a.m. wearing ski masks. This is what's coming to your neck of the woods, America. And you know what? Let me tell you something. It's too late. Either you rise or well, you will be overcome by these people. Let's put it this way. Up in Boston, the Bostonians are are not nearly as armed as other Americans a lot of time because they've had this culture of anti-guns up there. If they try to do it down in the south here, like in Texas or in California where I am in Raintown, uh, they're going to be greeted by bullets. They're going to get, hello, get the hell out of my face. What do you think you're doing here? We're law-abiding citizens. You don't uh, have any right to be here. Get off our land, period. And it won't just have regular weapons. It'll have uh, conventional armor-piercing weapons, so your body armor won't stop it. And I'll have unconventional weapons, which, by the way, I'm putting up plans up on the website so people want to build them. You know, like an air compressor gun with ball bearings that are ten times harder than a bullet. They'll go right through the side of a Bradley or another material or a so-called Kevlar shield, like butter. Um, Particle beam weapons, uh, um, all kinds of little nasty technology you can put together with a few parts from your hardware store. So when people think that including scalar weapons, and I'm even going to put information on psychotronic weapons so people can start to know how to put these things together, and they can actually start saying, we don't want to use these. We're going to be law-abiding citizens. But if you think that you're going to do bad stuff to us, think again. You're going to think you're going to the chicken yard, and you're going to find out you're going to have a herd of 12-foot-tall, razor-sharp, titanium-clawed raptors tearing your guts out. We're not going to be passive. Not. Not. And don't think it just take one or two of us. If you kill Deagle or Alex Jones or Alexander Bachman or anybody else, including John Moore, there'll be 10,000 at your throat. Exactly. And what Don't think you're going to get away with this. Don't think that you're the ultimate predator. No. The ultimate predator is righteous population pissed off because we finally reached our limit. I've always known this has been a war. When I came back from Oklahoma City... Uh, examining the five from the Oklahoma City uh, bombing experts, examining them at St. Francis Hospital, and I couldn't speak that night. I knew I was in a nation. As I said the other day when I had Victor Thorne on, and he tried to jump on it, I said, America is the most evil nation in history, followed slowly by great afterward by Israel. It's also was one of the most righteous because we're always there to help people. But with our current leadership, the daughter of Babylon, the evil side, is taking over. It's almost like, you know, one of these multiple personalities. Now the demonic side is becoming the predominant personality, and the other one is being shoved aside. The daughter of Zion, the, the Christian side, the willing to help, always concerned about other nations, always wanting to spread peace. No, want to spread drones, want to spread chaos, want to spread war. One prepare for invasions, just like it says in the Bible. I saw a beast diverse from all the rest that crushed nations and broke them into pieces. That's what America is. The most evil nation that has ever existed on the earth is America. It is, isn't it? Judgment's coming. And it'll only be stopped by us righteous, just like we're in Sodom and Gomorrah, if we pray for our leaders, including the monster in the White House and his minions that he's appointing. And we pray God will bring closure and get rid of these monsters. Pray for America. Pray for yourself.